Mau. Good morning. 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 Gandum Dash. Cancel that. Morning. Cancel that. Morning. 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 Now. Yes. Ah, there we go. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, 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 thank you very much, dear. Lovely to see you. Good morning, all. Good morning, <laughs> Just going to start sharing our first video. Yeah, I just think it's sort of. I'll talk to him. Yeah. 
It was all going so well. And then my new cat, Ralph, decided to walk across the computer and stop it all. So <laughs> we're just going to have to get used. <laughs> so if you see something flying by every so often, a tabby cat, that's Ralph. And apologies if he manages to break things. I'm going to share the screen again and try and actually I might move on to the next song. <laughs> Morning, if folk want to unmute themselves and sort of have a chat, we'll start in a few minutes. Hello. Morning. Morning, morning. Everybody. That's uh, a bit so I can hear people better. Morning, everyone. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Morning. 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 Sorry, don't mind, Liz. Okay, Chris, would you mind doing Act 8, 26 to 40? I'll put that in the chat. All right. I've written on the back of my head. <laughs> right. Did somebody else say they would be happy to do something, do a reading for me? Oh, mini side pad there. Side pad. Mini, brilliant. There's no picture. Mini. No, I don't think she was volunteering, Liz. Oh, right. Oh, OK. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Minnie, I was about to put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I think she just happened to say her name in the context of trying ah, to sort out the fact she okay. can't get on <laughs> properly. There we go. Get to see Brian's nose. Brilliant. I'll just go and get a copy of the good book. It will appear on screen, but it's going to be small type, so that's a good idea. Can you find my big bubble? Bible? You've got it, did not you? And you got your big print Bible, did you? Milan. Hmm? Yeah. No. I've got one. You see Milan somewhere, man. I can tell you. Is it with you? We'll have a look for it anyway. Oh. So, so how are we all this morning? All right. All right. All right, good. Yeah. It's sunnier today than I thought it was going to be, but I think tomorrow is going to be the... Because, uh, of course, mm -hmm. it's my holiday. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and what did it always do? Um, bank holiday. <laughs> yeah, it's the way it goes, isn't it? <laughs> and they wonder why the British talk about the weather quite so much. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it has to be. Um, oh, you know what? It's already recording. There you go. I didn't realize that. Excellent. Right then. Well, good morning, everyone. And oh, thank you, Andrew. I'll just send you over the information now. Thank you. Oh, there's a What's it look like? Well, good morning and welcome to the shared screen because we've uh, got um, the um, opening prayers. If I could ask folk just to mute themselves, that'd be great. Thank you. Bless you, whoever that was. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad somebody else has it. My sneezes are huge. Unfortunately, I inherited my father's ability to blow my nose and sneeze and everything, and it is spectacular, to say the least. This is the good news. The grave is empty. Christ is risen. Alleluia. This is the good news. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never put it out. Alleluia. This is the good news. Once we were no people, now we are God's people. Alleluia. So our first song, it's not in our hymn books, it's, uh, or not in Singing of Faith, it's Come People of the Risen King, but I imagine quite a few people may know it. <laughs> Yeah. 
Let us pray. Loving God, as we come before you, we come before you rejoicing, rejoicing for the wonders of your creation, rejoicing in your love for us, rejoicing in the power and the hope of the resurrection. Lord, may we look out for those things which cause us to praise you. Those moments which remind us of your love. May it inspire us to be loving, hopeful, praising people. It can be easy for us sometimes to feel bogged down. Yet around us, there are all those glimpses of your glory. May our hearts and our minds be open to them. And when we see them, may we sing with joy and thanksgiving. Yet Lord, as we come before you in worship, we come aware that we haven't always lived or acted or spoken in a way that praises you. We've not always been the best versions of ourselves. Lord, we are sorry. Sorry for our deliberate acts or our neglect. 
which has hurt others, hurt you, hurt ourselves. Lord, we seek your forgiveness. And we seek it in the confidence of the promise of your risen son who died for our sins, was raised again triumphant and lives forevermore. Amen. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As well as being the fifth Sunday after Easter, um, or the fifth Sunday of Easter, to give it its correct name, today is also Vocation Sunday. And I thought we might use this morning just to think a little bit about vocation. So vocation, what is it? What do we think of when we say that? Well, it is perhaps a calling. It's something people do, perhaps something which somebody else does. Somebody else has a vocation. Or perhaps it's best described as a way of living. Now, yes, we often think about vocation in the religious sense, you know, monks and nuns have a vocation, ministers have a vocation, but actually vocation goes beyond that. So I know teachers who see their role there as a vocation, police officers, nurses, doctors, aid workers, all who have a vocation. But I would say that vocation isn't just for a select few people who feel they've got a particular calling to a particular thing. I say that vocation is all of us. We all have a vocation to be people of the risen king. Now, it's really easy for me to say that, but to live it is a bit more difficult, perhaps. Or to say, well, we are people of the, the uh, king, the risen king, how we actually live that out might look different for different people because we're all individuals. We've all got different gifts, different talents, different ways of being. So one person's vocation may look different from another's. But as Paul says in Corinthians, whatever we do, whatever we are, it has to be underpinned by love and faith. And that's the thing we all have in common in our vocations. So we have a shared vocation to be people of the risen king, to love one another, to live lives of faith and integrity. And our readings this morning will explore this idea of vocation being for everybody, but perhaps looking different for different people. And we'll look at our readings and help explore it. And I hope it will help you explore or, or reflect upon your own vocation, even if you think you don't have a vocation. As we worship together, I want you to give thanks for the way that God has called you, the gifts that God has given you, the ways you are already living out a life of vocation or a vocation you've had in the past. But also ask you to sort of perhaps open your mind to other things in your life, which actually are vocation or a calling to vocation, but you just haven't realized or named it as such yet. I think some people go about their godly living and don't necessarily think of it as vocation, but it is. The people who remember to make phone calls or send postcards or offer friendship, that is a vocation, that's a calling. So I'm going to ask Chris to uh, bring our first reading, which comes from Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, verses 26 to 40, reading from the Good News Version, headed Philip and the Ethiopian Official. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, get ready and go south to the road that goes from Jerusalem to Gaza. This road is not used nowadays. So Philip got ready and went. Now, an Ethiopian eunuch 
who was an important official in charge of the treasury of the Queen of Ethiopia, was on his way home. He'd been to Jerusalem to worship God and was going back home in his carriage. As he rode along, he was reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, go over to that carriage and stay close to it. Philip ran over and heard him reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. He asked him, do you understand what you are reading? The official replied, how can I understand unless someone explains it to me? And he invited Philip to climb up and sit in the carriage with him. The passage of scripture which he was reading was this. Like a sheep that is taken to be slaughtered, like a lamb that makes no sound when its wool is cut off, he did not say a word. He was humiliated and justice was denied him. No one will be able to tell about his descendants because his life on earth has come to an end. The official asked Philip, tell me, of whom is the prophet saying this? Of himself or of someone else? Then Philip began to speak. Starting from this passage of scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled down the road, they came to a place where there was some water and the official said, here is some water. What is to keep me from being baptized? The official ordered the carriage to stop and both Philip and the official went down into the water and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord took Philip away. The official did not see him again, but continued on his way full of joy. Philip found himself in Azotus. He went on to Caesarea and on the way he preached the good news in every town. Thank you, Chris. When we talk about vocation, it probably isn't unusual for us to think about the disciples, um, to sort of talk about what they're, you know, they are obviously people with vocations, aren't they? So here we have Philip, one of the disciples, a man with an obvious calling and a man with an obvious vocation. And in this moment, he is called to encourage and equip someone else, namely this Ethiopian eunuch. And we can talk a lot about that particular story. But I think what I want to pull out is, yes, we've got Philip who is responding to his calling and probably quite comfortable in it. He's responding and encouraging and equipping. He's teaching this eunuch. But what happens to the eunuch? after this encounter. We know he is baptized, but he would have gone back and carried on with his normal job. In having this encounter, in having his eyes open to the scripture and being baptized, whilst for some people that means an absolute change in life, something remarkable goes and happens. For other people, vocation is about sticking with what you're already doing. So the unit goes back to his normal job and normal life. I say normal. I mean, when you're the um, Chamberlain for the Queen of Egypt, it's not exactly normal, is it? And we hear nothing more about him. But we do know that um, Christianity in Ethiopia has a very long and rich history. So in my imagination, I like this idea of this man going, this unnamed man going back home and continuing to live his life, but with deeper faithfulness to God. And that's impacting those around him this life of faithfulness this life of love for God lived out in his life and work which he was already doing so sometimes vocation is about being a faithful person wherever we find ourselves actually vocation is always about being a faithful person wherever we find ourselves vocation isn't necessarily about going and doing something remarkable or something different I think in this story, there is also something to be said about fellowship. Philip was available to this man when he needed him. Philip's vocation in this moment was about availability, about being open to questions, about just having a conversation. And again, that's something we can all do is just be available, just be open to conversation, be open to fellowship. I think we all realise that we are missing fellowship, missing each other and realising how important that is to our life of faith and discipleship. 
So I say to you that our vocation or an aspect of our vocation is to be available to each other. And that might be in person or that might be quick chats over the phones or sending a card or something like that. All of that is an important part of being people of the risen king. We're going to sing again, singing the faith 620, thou God of truth and love. vocation needs to be fed by things needs to be underpinned and as this reading shows us perhaps the most important underpinning is being loved by God our love for God and our love for each other so this comes from 1 John chapter 4 beginning to read at verse 7 dear friends let us love one another for love comes from God Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. 
he's given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testify that the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. But then in this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. One who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. Whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this commandment. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. I'm going to share a music video called If I Speak Words of Wisdom, which kind of brings, reflects on this, but also reflects on the famous reading from 1 Corinthians 13. It's all about how whatever we do needs to be underpinned by love. If I speak words of wisdom inspired from above, if I fathom the mysteries of life, and my faith moves a mountain, but I don't have love, I'm as dead as a river run dry. So I will remain in the love of my Lord and cling like a branch to the vine. I walk in his footsteps and live by his word. And I will. Suffer for every good cause Yet if my life is loveless Then I've fallen short Of the fruitfulness God made me for
walk in his footsteps and live by his word and I will Andrew, if you could unmute yourself and ask you to bring for us our gospel reading. So our gospel reading is from John chapter 15, verses 1 to 8, and I'm reading from the New International Version. The paragraph, the chapter's entitled, The Vine and the Branches. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you. Ask whatever you wish, and it will be given you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Thanks to the Lord for his word. Amen. Thank you, Andrew vine and the branches. Sometimes, as I've said, when we think about vocation, we think about vocation as being something which we do. But actually, we're not called to do Christianity. What we are, each and every one of us, called to is to be Christians. We are called to be followers of Christ, to be lovers of God. Now, yes, being and doing are closely related, but they are not the same. Vocation belongs or begins with our being. As that gospel reading we just heard and the reading from John's letter a bit earlier shows that being is about connection with God, abiding in God allowing ourselves to be loved by God and to love in return. It's all about being and not doing. Jesus uses this image of the vine and the branches, and it is from the vine that the life travels through the branches. It is through the vine that life flows. If the branches are separated from the vine, then the branch dies. It has no chance of bearing fruit. In other words, it doesn't have a chance of doing. We cannot do vocation. We cannot do things in God's name without the being first. Yes, it all begins with being, dwelling in God's presence. But I think it's inevitable when we be when we dwell in God's presence, when we allow ourselves to be loved by God and to love God in return, we can't help ourselves but to start doing. In other words, 
to use the vine and the branches, the fruit. If we are being in God, if we are being followers of Jesus, if we are allowing God to abide in us, then we fruit. There's nothing, you know, we respond, we do. So vocation starts with being, but it definitely leads to doing in some way. And perhaps it is in the doing that we, our vocations look different. But our being is a shared and common calling. The outcome of our being loved, our outcome of our loving is in our actions. We have to remember that we do not do vocation in our own strengths. In each of those readings, we realize it is through God that any of our actions, any of our good actions, our fruitful actions happen. So Philip, for instance, he doesn't kind of go, I know what I'll do. I'll hang around on a road and see if I can find a eunuch who might want to hear more about the scripture. He's inspired and led by the Holy Spirit who gives him the words, gives him the power, the wisdom. And this happens again and again. It's in his being, which then leads him to doing. So when we think about vocation, we think by we begin by thinking about our being and perhaps the quality of our being in Christ, the quality of our abiding in God. If we wish for a life of vocation, whatever that vocation might look like, because obviously it looks different for different people, because we've all got different talents, different gifts, different opportunities. But we each have to pay attention to our life of worship and prayer and meditating upon God's words, because it's that which underpins and informs our actions. As the intimations to 1 Corinthians 13 say, if we don't underpin what we do by being in God, by loving God, and it's a bit pointless, well, maybe not pointless, but it's not fruitful and it's not filled with love. It's not, it's not what God would enable us to be. That is true. That thing around paying attention to our life of worship and discipleship is true for us as individuals, but also true for us as churches and we're at an interesting time in our communal faith as our churches reopen and we begin to reassess the life of our churches. What activities are we going to pick up again? Are we going to leave some activities behind? Are we going to change some of our groups a bit? What's important to us? What comes out of our being and leads into our doing? We must, as our churches, pay attention to our life of faith, our life of being, of worship and prayer and dwelling in God's word, because that will inform and inspire and enable our doing. And it might be that we find ourselves doing something different. It might be, I believe, that we will kind of realise what we've done before, but we really want to focus on. We realise what our priorities are. I think actually groups or opportunities to provide fellowship in lots of different ways is going to be key for us actually as a community as a wider community not just a church community but as a wider community we've realized how important human connection is in so many different ways actually is our calling at this point just to be available to those who need us to those who just need some friendship some listening some human connection. I don't know, but I think we do need to think about that and pay attention to it. And as we pay attention to what we're going to be doing as church communities, we must always pay attention to our being in Christ. So vocation isn't just for somebody else, isn't for the professional Christians. And as I've said hundreds of times before, and I will keep saying there's no such thing as a professional Christian. Vocation is something for everybody because vocation is about attending to our abiding in God. And that's everybody's vocation. Vocation is about living a life of love because we are loved by God and we love in return. We can't get away from that in our readings today, can we? And again, funnily enough, living a life of love is everybody's vocation. 
Vocation is about inviting people into fellowship with God. Again, that's everyone's vocation because we can all do it in different ways. And perhaps, just perhaps, there are additional gifts or callings which you feel God is asking you to use or offer. Maybe you already are an hooray, brilliant. We pray for you. We thank you. Keep on doing it. And it might be there's something new or different you want to offer. And if that's the case, I encourage you to pray about it, think about it, talk about it with trusted friends and chat with your ministers. In other words, offer yourself to God. Going to play a song from the Wild Goose Collective, which some of you may know, and it is based upon that reading we've heard from John's Gospel. It's called I Am the Vine. And it's just a reminder about the importance of abiding in God, allowing God to live in us so that we can not only be followers of Christ, but then do vocation as well. We come to our prayers of intercession and invite you to respond in the words in the heavy print. Let us pray. 
Abiding God, we lift our world to you. Holding in our hearts places where lives are crushed by injustice, torn up by conflict, trampled by the greed of others. May justice germinate and righteousness ripen all that may know your abundant love. Let us lift our prayers for the world to God. Reroot us in you, that your kingdom may grow through us. Nurturing God, we pray for our communities, holding in our hearts places where isolation has laid waste, deprivation has parched, dreams have withered. Flow afresh through these places that all may know your promise of fullness. Let us lift our prayers for our communities to God. Reroot us in you that your kingdom may grow through us. Life-giving God, we pray for our church where apathy disease, diseases. Plant in us a dis-ease with all that stifles your spirit. Where lack of vision is caused, causing your people to perish. Grant us into your limitless love. Where weariness with us, revive us with the light of Jesus. Let us lift our prayers for the church to God. Reroot us in you, that your kingdom may grow through us. We pray for ourselves and the concerns of our hearts. Let us lift our prayers for ourselves to God in the stillness. Prune us to be ready to respond to you. Rewild us with your ever-flowing grace. Graft us to you that we may bear much fruit. Reroot us in you that your kingdom may grow through us. Amen. Our final hymn is Singing the Faith 443, Come Let Us Sing of a Wonderful Love.
I won't bother reading that all again. I'll let you just read. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> May the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And I was doing so well. <laughs>